Hello, and welcome back to the Hobo and I have to fix that picture. Wrestling show. I am for I am the one and only Hobo Tom. Unfortunately, I'm wearing well, not unfortunately. I like this shirt too. I'm wearing my DIY shirt. Unfortunately, one of them's off getting neck surgery. This guy Champa. There he is. Champa is off getting neck surgery, so we won't see him. Bad. Um. Eventually, we're also going to get see some Southern Pro Lucha Libre. And I do like to plug them every so often now that I found the card. And right now, my Southern Pro Lucha Libre shirt got worn to work, worn to the gym. Now it's in the wash. So we'll see that shirt pop up every so often. And if you see a guy wearing either a Hobo shirt or a Southern Pro Lucha Libre shirt, be sure to say hi to him. And give him a give him a piece of aluminum. Give him an empty aluminum can. Doesn't have to be full. Empty is good enough. But I'm not here to talk about that. So I'll probably talk more about that next week. Because next week, this guy is going off to see NXT in Sanford. Excellent. So I think I only work till 5:30. So that gives me whole hour. No, I could leave from work, too. I didn't think of that. Ooh. I can change that work. That shaves off 20 minutes. And I might have a date. You never know. But so So we'll see what happens. And so let's talk about some SmackDown, though, because this was really a tale of two halves. The first hour seemed really long. The second hour went by so quick, though, and it was so much better. So let's start things off. Uh, Shane McMahon comes out, hits a promo. He's the best in the world. And you heard some guy from the crowd. I love the fact they have mics that close to the ring. I mean, you could just hear some guy yell, I still love you, Shane! Jeez. Can he explain why he attacked the Miz? Makes sense. Book it now. Shane McMahon versus the Miz at WrestleMania. Again. Well, again for Shane, at least. Good to see the Miz, though. I think the Miz is kind of having fun with us. And I think he is expecting a second child, too. Because I do like that show Miz and Miss. That's funny. It's so staged. It's so good, though. They seem, and I think I've said this before, the, uh, Mike Mizano and Maurice Mizano do really seem to love each other and just thoroughly enjoy each other. One day, maybe this hobo will find that happiness. Stranger things have happened, folks. Oh, I haven't seen pigs flying. And having cats fly is kind of inhumane. In fact, I don't think if I had to fly somewhere, I would just buy the extra seat for my kitty cat, who's taking a nap down there. She's just staring at me. It's like, if you touch me and make me go on this YouTube show again, I'm going to make sure to sit on your face when you're asleep. And she's just taking her nap. In fact, that's what I'm going to be doing soon, too. Because I just woke up from a nap. And wow, was I out of it. So I'm going to go back to that nap I had really soon. Actually, I don't feel that yawny. Oh, last week I did. I have changed my diet. I've gone all vegetarian. With the exception of some cheese, though. I do need some animal product. Cheese and butter taste so good, though. But I'm getting sidetracked. Um, so our first match. They're really using up the mileage on Alistair Black and Rickish. And that's beginning to worry me. Not so much for Alistair Black. Ricochet has that style. The, the flippy, flippy stuff. 
It only takes one bad fall to tweak something. You do the same move, hit it on that tweaked ankle, and then all of a sudden you start talking about tendons and, and ugh, stuff. And I do not want to see that for Ricochet. I want to say Ricochet, even though can being a pro wrestler is a very rough lifestyle. A lot of time on the road. And NXT, I only think he only had to work at most three days out of the week. And for most of that time, he would at least still be in the state of Florida. So you're just driving from town to town. You're not necessarily flying. And again, like me to go to Dade City, is, it's a drive. It's three and a half hours. But I could get to Tampa probably in about three and a half hours. If I had to drive to Miami, it would probably be about five or six, depending on traffic. And the same would be true, I want to say it would be about seven hours if I had to go all the way out towards Pensacola. So it's all kind of right here. And again, three days with like a two-hour drive. And I'm sure he has some apartment here in Orlando somewhere. Or the greater Orlando area. But it's beginning to worry me a little bit. And then they teamed up with the Hardys. To face the bar and Shinsuke and Rusev. So again, it's your classic heel versus face. And I'll tell you what, it, it was fun. It's getting a tiny bit old and very repetitive. I do appreciate, fully appreciate the fact that they have Alistair Black and Ricochet on the main roster. They're just wearing that mileage, though, on those two. I like it when they're definitely on one brand. And you see them every so often, just enough to remind... I, I do like when they were on both shows for the, for the two weeks in a row. But now it just seems to be kind of getting old-ish. I mean, they have them doing the same thing really against the same people. It's a little twist. What the heck was that? Oh, I know what that is. It's from my burn. I hate that feeling. Oh, sorry about that. That was a fun match, though. The Hardys are really good to team with. Delete! Yeah! Wonderful! Flippy stuff! Jeff doesn't have to be flying all over the ring. He can have Ricochet do it. And Ricochet did it a little bit. Not as much. Again, I think it's that whole mileage thing. With with Ricochet. That might be getting to him soon. On the heels, again, they have a classic tactic. They they find one person, isolate him, keep him in their half of the ring for most of it. Um, eventually, uh, Jeff Hardy starts busting out twists of fates to everyone. Hits a fun bomb onto Cesaro. Cesaro is still great. And then just culminates in one big brawl. And you know what that means, baby? That means someone else has to get involved. Just can't have these fight in the monks and sales and not get others involved. We need a good old brouhaha. So, enter in the new day. It's the DQ, baby. It's the dusty finish. But these wrestlers are so good. It's a dusty cheeseburger, baby. Baby! And we have to all about pro again. Wow. Enough about that nonsense, nonsensical stuff. Again, it was it was a cheeseburger match. It just got seemed really busy at the end. Um, then you have the Usos promo. Ooh, they're good. 
I forget the one line, but again, it always ends with the Uso Penitentiary. And then another promo. Again, this is where it got weird because it was the first half of the show was very promo heavy. You have Randy Orton promo about AJ Styles. <laughs> he says how AJ is going to take over the house AJ Styles built. Everyone knows Randy Orton burnt down a house. AJ, AJ Styles again. <laughs> he kind of kind of gives him the ribbing by saying, "Yeah, you're with a bunch of families, including the Wyatt family." And then Randy Orton uses the B word again. Wow, I guess that's been knocked off the list of words you can't say. I wonder if I can say that on YouTube. I know YouTube has new regulations about that, so we'll see. Then you have Asuka versus Sony versus Boo Sonya Deville. Asuka's still cute looking though. I like when she takes off that mask. She has like that white eyed look. She's just, like smiling. It's like give me a fuzzy warm feeling right here. Hey Asuka. I'm single too. And she takes on Boo Sonya Deville. I'll I'll never cheer for Sonya Deville. Even if she does turn on Mandy Rose. Sonya has a new outfit, though. She's actually wearing pants versus those that some of the fight trunks. Skirt gladiator type thing. Which is good. Because that black leather seemed to be a little too tight in certain places. And it's not necessarily something... Well, I do want to see it. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, what am I thinking? It just looks weird. TV in black leather. That's probably it. So Sonya, I didn't realize she was booked that strong. I didn't realize that she became that good of a wrestler. I mean, I remember her first match versus Lacey Evans. It was a stinker. Again, part of the Boo Sonya Deville thing. Well, then she beat my princess Kimberly. But again, she was booked pretty strong until Mandy Rose started to try to interfere. And eventually Asuka did get the upper hand. They use that modified GT uh, GTS a lot now. Where it's not... It's like a pop-up knee to the face. Forget if the original... I think the real... GTS, the original one, had the guy in like a Lex Luger backbreaker position, literally flip him over, then hit him, then bring knee to face. I think when CM Punk used it, you just kind of drop him on his knee from a fireman's carry position. The one Hideo, yeah, Hideo Tommy originally used, ooh, I think that did actually break the yeah, I think it did break the orbital bone of Austin Aries. I think it did. That was a while ago, though. I don't even think Austin Aries is impact after that stunt he pulled. Zero class. But more to this, Oscar hits that and gets in kind of the Oscar lock, but it's done differently because she didn't really lock it up. She just kind of was pulling on the neck. Armbar. Whatever works. Sonya Deville tapped out. And Asuka's still the champion. Mandy Rose, though. She's very standoffish. Very jealous. She has that, like, eh. look. Yeah, this was fun. This was a good cheeseburger match. Then we have the Iconics, and they're talking about the women's tag team belt, which they should, because I guess there's going to be, like, I think this WrestleMania is going to be, like, a lot of, like, multi-person, non-tag team matches and multi-tag team matches. So it'll be interesting to see the Iconics and what happens to them, see if they're the team for SmackDown. 
Go to face the boss and hugs connection. So we'll see how that goes. That was like the first hour. And I was like, mm, okay. And then picked up with a Becky Lynch. Oh, 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 oh. Becky Lynch throws a crush, crush away. She does a promo against Charlotte. And woo! Becky is a new cerebral assassin because she got, because she played Ronda Rousey just like the puppet she was. Oh. That was pretty cool. And then, of course, there's the infamous mic drop. Boom! Goes the dynamite. I'm done. Then the next match again, kind of another heel versus faces match. You have Rey Mysterio Jr. They actually dropped the Jr. part. Or am I just so used to calling him Jr.? Rey Mysterio Jr. Our truth versus Andrade Cien Almas and Samoa Joe. This was fun. This is where a tale of two shows comes in. Because this whole second half of SmackDown was completely different. Joe is terrifying. Joe is awesome. So good. And every all of his strikes are so crisp. He just looks like he's in a fight. Which is good. Um, R-Truth does the, the five moves of Doom. Did not hit the AA, though. Again, Rey Mysterio gets his looks in. Andrade, Andrade did the mocking three amigos of Eddie Guerrero. And Zelina Vega was trying to pull Andrade, I think, closer to the ropes or something, or hold his feet down. And Carmella came over, yanked her right off the ring, the, the ring apron. And she and <laughs> poor Selena Vega fell right on her boobie. Fell right square on her chest. And you can see that she was laying there. Oh, in pain. <laughs> poor Alice Black. He has to give her a rub down. Um. Rey Mysterio then hit what Corey Graves dubs as a 12 to 18, which is a 619 on two people. Makes sense. You double it, you double those numbers, 12 to an 18. Corey, Matthew, your, Corey Graves, your math is actually pretty good. Samoa Joe helped out, uh, broke up the one pin on Andrade Almas, pinning a senton. Ray gets a roll up, and Ray just sat on Samoa's just chest. Which is probably the only way you could pin Joe if you're that small. Ray Mysterio got the pinfall. Joe was upset. An upset Joe. Very bad Samoa Joe. Because Joe cleaned house. He was he was dishing out Inagaris to R Truth and Andrade. <laughs> This was this was a great match. This is a this is what a surf and turf match is. Then the main event, or the the wrestling main event, it featured Kevin Owens and Mustafa Ali versus Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan. Again, this was also really good. Rowan's just strong. And he's booked strong. He's booked as a, as a strong brawler, which is what he should be. And Daniel Bryan, he knows the rules. Hey, ref, I have till five. I can do whatever I want until you hit four or five. I think after five, you have to break it. So he has a five count, and Daniel Bryan knows that rule of professional wrestling. Again, he hit that dragon suplex from the top. Again, Kevin Owens couldn't do much against Eric Rowan. Ali couldn't do much against Eric Rowan. It did take a double super kick after an individual super kick from KO, a double super kick by both KO and Ali to get Rowan out of the ring. But Rowan's been a tag team wrestler before. Daniel Bryan was in the ring. He hit that blind tag. 
Ali is not used to being in tag team situations. That blind tag, again, he thought Daniel Bryan would be would be there. Eh -eh. Rowan caught him and hit that iron claw slam. The, the claw of Baron Von Rafsky is back. Everything old eventually becomes new again. That's what I like. I like old school wrestling moves just like the claw. The abdominal, I think. The Baron used it on the head. And the Von Erichs used the abdominal claw. Which just means you're like just pinching one's gut. Another's gut. But again, this was a fun match too. It's a surf and turf match. Then we get Vince McMahon coming out. Just nods to Kevin Owens. Or gets, just nods to Daniel LeBron. Yeah. yeah. Kevin Owens, I think. Maybe, maybe him and Daniel LeBron. Good match. So he comes out, and then they have a New Day segment. All The whole members of the New Day come out in front. Vince McMahon. You don't deserve anything. You gotta earn it. And nothing is bigger than my ego. That was a great line by George Sakai. Uh, interviewed for something. It was on the Howard Stern show. It was it was William Shatner. I made it a stand-in for 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 George Sakai as Sulu. And and I like to use this too. When I'm with a woman, always a three. Me, the woman, and my ego. Wow, that's that's a powerful statement. Because nothing is bigger than Vince McMahon's ego. Nothing! <laughs> nothing. So this sets up next week where it's going to be a gauntlet match. And I think I got the participants. I'm a little bit fuzzy on the final one. It's going to be Kofi versus Randy Orton versus J Samoa Joe versus Sheamus versus Cesaro versus Ronan and, and Daniel Bryan. That's going to be like the whole show. So um, eventually they start running into the ring. The New Day, they're not having none of it. They clean the house. It's almost like Vince McMahon's teasing or tempting Kofi to break apart from the New Day. Because he said, oh no, you are Hall of Fame material, but not by yourself, with the New Day. Kind of like China is going to the Hall of Fame, the X. So it might be a while until she's in individually. Although they do have Corey Wilson coming in. To the Hall of Fame. And it was funny. I was texting with a friend. It's like, he said, like, What would what, what Tori Wilson say? Hey, listen, she had those great evening gown dress matches and pillow fights. Yes. So that's the show for today. Um, I'm actually off for a couple of days now. So you'll see me back here on Monday, and then you're going to go a whole bevy of wrestling for two more weeks. Kind of leading up to WrestleMania. Wow. Everyone have a good night, morning, day. Whatever it is. Bye.